problem number 13, we'd like to find dy dx for the curve sine of x times y is equal to x plus y. All right, so we need to take the derivative of each of these pieces separately using implicit differentiation. And this first guy can be a little bit tricky if you don't think about it carefully. So we need to take the derivative of sine of something, right? We're taking the derivative of sine of something, and just like when we learned the chain rule, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of something times the derivative of the something. So the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same thing times the derivative of x times y. But the derivative of x times y is a product, so we need to use the product rule. So it's the first x times the derivative of y, which we call dy dx, plus the second y times the derivative of x, which is just 1. So we're done. So the derivative of sine of x times y is cosine of xy times x times dy dx plus y. Then we need to add on uh, what's on the other side of the equation. So this should equal the derivative of x, which is 1, plus the derivative of y, which is dy dx. And now the key is we need to solve this thing for dy dx. This is a place where students can make a lot of mistakes in the algebra. Because if you try to start solving right now for dy dx without multiplying this cosine of x times y through to both of these <coughs> terms that are inside the parentheses, you have a lot of problems. So what we need to do is first let's multiply this cosine of xy through, then we'll start working to solve for dy dx. So let's multiply it through first. If I do, I get uh, cosine of x times y uh, times x times dy dx. Then I'll multiply the cosine x times y by y. So I get plus cosine x times y times y. And on the other side, I have 1 plus dy Now what I'd like to do, now that I'm right here, is let's get all the dy dx stuff on one side of the equation and all the non-dy dx stuff onto the other side of the equation. If I do that, I get the following. So I'll leave this on the left side since it already has a dy dx. So I'll write cosine of xy uh, times x times dy dx. And the only other thing that has a dy dx in it is this dy dx. And if I move it to the other side of the equation, it's a negative dy dx. Okay, and that equals, I have a 1 that's already sitting on the right side. I'll leave it there. And then I need to move this cosine xy times y to the other side as a minus cosine xy times y. Okay, now everything's ready to go, and everything on this side of the equation has a dy dx. Everything on this side doesn't, so what I want to do is let's factor out the dy dx on this side. If I do, I get dy over dx times cosine of xy times x minus 1. So I just factored out the dy dx and got cosine of xy times x minus 1. And on the other side, I just have what I had before, 1 minus cosine of xy times y. All right, so the last thing I have to do here is divide both sides of the equation by cosine of xy times x minus 1. So I get dy over dx is equal to 1 minus cosine of xy times y divided by cosine xy times x minus 1. And we have 